Today is the last day to pre-order one of these tees, so if you've had your eye on it, you need to get it done today. We aren't sure if or when these will be available again, and we don't want you to miss out. So visit the link in the description to pre-order, and after today, we'll work on getting them printed and shipped out. We can't wait for you to have it in your hands. You know how when you were a kid, you would put a bunch of things in a shoebox or some kind of container and you would bury it in the backyard and like five or 10 years later, you would dig it up and look at the stuff in there. That's kind of how this experience was. Oh my gosh, that's not all. There's, there are more swatches in here. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Humor me for a little bit. We're gonna go through this swatch basket because I have been kind of hoarding some of these swatches for a really long time. One of the things you may have noticed, hopefully you've noticed, is that with some of the stitch tutorials, the newer ones that I have made, I'm trying to incorporate more types of yarn with these stitches so you can get a feel for it. So you don't have to make a bunch of swatches. I'm making them all and hoarding them all for you, as it turns out. <laughs> but I want you to see how a stitch looks in a bunch of different yarns. So this is all a fisherman's rib. Again, this is a knit stitch, so sorry. We've got some mosaic looking yarn, and then we've got some like textured yarns. It's, you know, alpaca blend, so it's kind of fuzzy and has a halo. Bulky weight, ombre, this is scarfy. I love scarfy. And then this is just a nice, smooth worsted weight yarn. Anyways, some of these aren't super interesting, so I'm not even gonna show you. This is a brioche, more knitting, random swatch. This might look familiar. We're actually gonna talk about this in another video or this video. I don't really know what's going on here, guys. I'm just going through my closet, my swatch basket, and taking you along the ride with me. This though, this is fun. This is the crochet challenge for Warm Up America swatch. All right, this is the swatch that I used for the video. And then this is the swatch that I made originally to see if the stitch pattern would actually work out and to, you know, measure the gauge and stuff. Always like to keep those. More ribbing, a granny square. I mean, you just, you gotta have some granny squares lying around. Got some Tunisian crochet. This is fun. We've never actually talked about this one before. So you all know that I do a crochet challenge for Warm Up America. I try to do it every single year. We missed a couple of years because of, you know, like 2020 was just, we all try to forget about that year. This was the idea for one of those challenge blankets. I worked up the swatch to see if it would be doable. And I decided that it would probably be too challenging for the challenge. So it, it didn't make the cut, but I kept the swatch because it's really cool looking. This was the year that we sent them to Walter Reed. So that's why we've got the red, white, and blue um, color palette here. But yeah, I don't know, maybe someday we'll, we'll revisit this stitch. It's really cool. It makes a beautifully textured fabric as you can see, but you know, that's, that's a lot for a blanket and it's a lot for a challenge that you're trying to complete in a deadline. This is something else that never made the cut. Just playing with some mitered squares, some garter stitch swatches. Oh my gosh. Okay. Woven stitch. By the way, I will link to the stitch tutorials for some of these if they are available. A lot of them are, but some of them aren't. You can search through the, des through the description and see what you want. Some of these I don't even remember. <laughs> what they were from. I know the yarn. This is uh, Chic Sheep. Chic Sheep. Yeah, I said that right. Um, by, by Marley Bird. Great yarn, by the way. And you can find it in a lot of craft stores, which is really nice. I did a blog post a couple of years ago uh, with Lovecrafts about color theory and crochet. I'll link to that too. There's a lot of really good information there, but I was playing with the idea of making or like crocheting a color wheel. And as you can see, it didn't exactly work out because it's not in the blog post and it's here in my little basket. But yeah, that's what that's from. Also, what that is from. 
more color change. Yeah, so these little swatches that I keep when I when I say color change, these ones are from a guide on how to change colors in crochet. I'll link to that too. That's actually a really good resource. Honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> I really don't know. Ooh. I love this yarn. I Huga. I think that's how you say it. By Red Heart. This stuff is so soft. Like it's incredibly soft. I just want to like wrap up in that. I'm pretty sure these were all the swatches that I used for, oh my gosh, the guide on how to crochet straight edges. Again, another really good guide. I'll link to that as well. We've got lots of those. This one is eye catching, right? This is really pretty. This is one of my stitch tutorial swatches using Red Heart Unforgettable. This colorway, I believe, is called Heirloom, if I'm not mistaken. I'll link to this tutorial, too, if you're interested. Really cool stitch. Love using puff stitches with Unforgettable yarn. It's like one of my favorite combos. And we, you know, we've got a lot of little random, more, more color theory stuff. Uh-huh. Huh, I didn't know I still had these. I made a snowflake pattern also many years ago. I want to say this was probably in 2015 when I made these. Still a great pattern, by the way, but I still have the original. I made it in different yarn weights so you can come up with different sizes. Super cool that I still have that. I remember this. I didn't even know this was in there. A drop spindle is a way that you can spin yarn or like not spin yarn. I mean, you are spinning yarn, but you're spinning the, the wool um, by using gravity and using this device to, to spin it. Anyways, this is a little tiny hank of yarn that I spun myself with my drop spindle. I need to put that somewhere else. I don't know why this is in my swatch basket. Uh, there was a time when I was absolutely obsessed with hairpin lace, and I don't know why I'm not anymore. I mean, I still love it. I just, I don't know. You know how, like, you get really obsessed with something and then you kind of forget about it? And that's kind of, that's kind of the, the thing here. Anyways, this was the swatch that I used for a hairpin lace scarf. I will link to that in the description as well. It's a super cool technique, something that I think everybody should try at least once. You do have to have a hairpin lace loom in order to make that happen. But yeah, I mean, they're like super cheap. You can get one for like, I don't know, probably five bucks on Amazon. I'll have one linked in the description if you want to give that a try. Look, we've got like little, little pieces of yarn pizza here for days for that, that little project that didn't actually work out. Ooh, this is different. This was another experiment that didn't actually make the cut. It totally needs to be blocked, so it looks awful right now, but yeah, Tunisian Crochet Star, super cool technique. I need to revisit this, but for now, yeah, there's there's no video on this. This was just purely experimental. Really? Like, I don't, I don't know, guys. Some of this stuff, I don't know why it's in here. We've got a couple of these motifs, and honestly, I don't remember where these came from where the pattern is. I, I don't remember at all <laughs> anything about these. It is simply soft yarn. Hmm. More pizza. Four leaf clover here. And we're getting to that time of year when we're, when we're going to make these. I will link this in the description as well. There's a free pattern. There is a tutorial, but I forewarn you, I made that probably like nine years ago. And I have gotten a lot better at talking to the camera and editing video since I made that. So I apologize in advance. Some bobble stitches, some winged cable stitches, shell stitch, and we've got some crocodile stitch. Yep. This is from an oval guide. This one like desperately needs to be updated. So I'm not going to link to that one yet, but one day I really do need to update that. This is a really cool ribbing pattern. This is my favorite rib stitch for crochet. It totally looks like knitting, right? If you look at it the right way, it looks like the stockinette stitch. Really one of the best. Love it. Slip stitch ribbing. 
I believe this was a washcloth, like one of the first washcloths that I ever made. I'm running out of room to put all this stuff. <laughs> little curly cues, these little spiral curly cues. They're so easy to crochet and they are really cute for a lot of things. Like you can make a bunting, is that what they're called? The things that you like hang on the wall where you, you know, have these dangling. I've seen people use them for amigurumi like squids or octopus uh, as the little tentacles. I've seen people use it for unicorn, like the mane and the tail. Anyways, this is really cool. It's like I said, super simple to make. I'll, I'll link to this little pattern, just little demonstration as well. Definitely something fun that you can make. This is an example of a wave border that I use in one of my baby blanket patterns. One of my favorite borders by far. Got us a simple chevron. We have a star stitch. Worked in a pretty yarn. No clue what that yarn is. Uh, I don't do much thread crochet because, I don't know, I just need a little bit more progress than what you get with using a yarn this small, but oh my gosh, I have such a deep respect for people who thread crochet because the result is absolutely stunning. But yeah, for me, it just takes a little bit too long to do. Anyways, this was me experimenting with a pretty little granny square using some of this thread that probably should go somewhere else. We have lots of flowers in here actually. So this is a 3D flower that I made and it's super wonky now. <laughs> like I'm not really doing it any justice here, but this is like one of the coolest crochet flower patterns that you'll come across. I might be a little bit biased, but it looks excellent with red heart, unforgettable. Any colorway that you try it with. This one, let me test my memory here. I think this one is called like tide or tidal or something along those lines. Very pretty. Here's another one. This colorway is definitely called dragonfly. No. Echo. This one is called echo. Yeah. Can you see the little hearts? I don't know. I've always wanted to make a blanket with this stitch, but just never got around with it. I really did go through a flower phase. This is my favorite colorway for this flower. This one is called Parrot. It's Red Heart Unforgettable Parrot. The way that this one worked with the, like just the natural stripe and the yarn, it just looks super cool. Anywho, these are front post double crochets that have kind of the popping out. And when you change every single, when you change colors every single row, because of the way the stitch is made, it kind of like makes it offset a little bit. So yeah, looks really cool. Another like really interesting technique that you can use for making blankets if you're looking for something a little bit more interesting than just, you know, regular stripes, you can incorporate a little bit of texture. That just about does it. We've just got a bunch of flowers in here. A couple stars. More of these circles. You know, I think I know what these were for. I think I started making a granny square blanket and these were gonna be the centers and I was gonna build out from there. I don't know. So if nothing else, I hope this maybe inspired you to hold on to some of those things that you're making, even if they don't have a purpose or you're kind of just crocheting for the fun of it, you're practicing a technique or whatever it is, instead of unraveling it or toss it, maybe just put it aside, start your own little swatch basket as I called it, which was more of like a memory box. It's really interesting how you can kind of remember the space that you were in when you made that thing, when you go back and visit it so many years later. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's super random and outside of our norm here, but I thought we could do something a little bit different, a little fun, a little bit more conversational. This pre-order is still going on, but it's only open until March 3rd. Okay, after that, we have to close the pre-order so we can 
you know, gather up those orders and we can have them printed and we can start shipping them to you. If you're looking for an additional way to support the channel outside of, you know, just subscribing and watching because that really does help the channel more than you even realize. But if you're looking to take that next step, then go ahead and pre-order a Crochet is Cool tee before the deadline on March 3rd. I'll have the link in the description. You can find all of the details on that page. And yeah, I'm really excited for you to have your hands on these. Happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next one.